G'day golfers. Well, let me get this straight. The harder you hit the golf ball, the shorter it goes. Hard to imagine, isn't it? But that's where a lot of golfers are. The harder they try to hit the golf ball, the further they try to hit the golf ball, the less distance they achieve because they're not unlocking their true power potential and therefore they're being inefficient with their golf swing. So if this is you and you really want to unlock that hidden power that you have and realize your true potential for distance, then these three simple steps are gonna help you to achieve that, whether you're hitting an iron, a wood, or a driver. Now stick around to the end, we've got a bonus little trick that's gonna help you to really hit that ball further without having to really change anything. I'm Glenn Haynes, welcome to Aussie Golf Press. So typically, what happens when a golfer tries to hit the ball further is they try harder, and that extra effort comes from the arms and the shoulders, the upper body, and they pull down harder, trying to generate that force. And actually what happens is typically a golfer slows down because what that does is upsets the kinetic chain, the natural sequence of the downswing, and therefore we reduce club head speed rather than increase it. So step one is to get the lower half to lead the upper half, not the other way around. Let's get rid of this extra effort and force from the arms and shoulders. We've all been there, we've all done it. Let's see if we can get the lower half to lead the upper half. Now the way we do that is we think about what your trail pocket does. So for right hander, your right pocket, it goes back behind you and then through towards the target. So in the backswing, as far back behind you as you can get it. We don't want to be swaying or just locking in place like a lot of golfers do. It's getting that pocket behind you, getting good rotation. And then I want you to think about where your lead pocket starts. That's where we're going to get the trail pocket to finish. And we've got to have that driving the downswing and through swing, not following. So trail pocket behind you, and then getting that trail pocket to go through towards the target. And that way we can start to use the ground and rotational energy to generate more speed. So step two is a little drill to help you to do that. So what we're gonna do here, we're going to turn forward. We're going to get used to moving that trail pocket towards the target before you swing. So there, a little bit like a Matthew Wolf trigger. Through and then around. Through and around, and we're really starting to get a Latin dancer out of you. Forward, back, forward. And it just helps to mobilize the hips, get them working, because typically a lot of golfers just get locked up in that area and make it very difficult for them to generate that free and easy speed and unlock the power that they're capable of achieving. So I hear you say, oh, I can't do that, I'm too stiff. Well, that's step three is we need to be a little bit more mobile. But let's focus on the areas that are really gonna help you golf. Number one is the hips, and number two, the upper back. The lower back shouldn't have to do much of that rotating. The lower back should be fairly stable. So if you're suffering from lower back pain from your golf, then these two little mobility exercises are really gonna help you to reduce some of that pressure on your lower back. So to get the hips mobilized a little bit more, we're gonna do something called stalk turns. So get into golfing posture and up on one leg, pop the foot behind your knee there and let's get the knee moving around and let's get those hips cranking backwards and forwards, really get some rotation. So if you struggle with your balance on that, just start with holding a golf club and then getting some support that way. Okay, and then obviously do the other side. So ideally into golfing posture, hands on your shoulders, and let's get those hips turning as far as you can go, and you might fall over a little bit. Use a, a driver to stabilize you until you get the hang of trying to stay on one leg there and be in balance. And this is gonna help you balance as well, of course. So upper thoracic, we're going to get into a squat position here. These are called T-spine rotations. So you're gonna get your forearms inside your knees and then look up one arm above and then switch around to the other side. And this is really going to help you to mobilize that upper back area because that's the section that should be rotating, not your lower back. So there are obviously lots of different stretches and mobility exercises to help you to mobilize your hips and your upper back. These are just a couple to get you started and a couple that you can do without sort of lying down on the wet grass or anything like that. So feeling a little stiff in those areas is a good little warm up before you play. And obviously if the more mobile we can be in those areas, then the easier it is for us to be able to 
really drive that trail pocket through towards the target and generate some more power from the ground up. So here's our bonus hack. If you're like me and a lot of golfers, then internally rotating your hips is actually quite difficult as we get older. So as you set up to the golf ball, instead of having your feet straight, just flare that lead foot out around about 30 degrees. You can flare out your trail foot as well if that helps you get into the backswing. But realistically, where we really struggle is getting through towards the target. So your lead foot, flare it out about 30 degrees, and that gives your lead hip an additional 30 degrees of rotation. So instead of being straight, you can instantly help those hips to turn through towards the target much more easily just by flaring out the feet a little bit. Any golfer can take these three steps to help them with their performance. Now you might not be able to turn as fast or as much as some of the golfers, but it's not about that, is it? It's about helping you to improve your clubhead speed with less effort and reduce chance of injury. Now, if you couple that with our video on hitting the driver further with our three steps from, that you learned from today, then it's really gonna help your performance off the tee. Thanks so much for watching. You're the best golfer you can be.